This is the Neptune 4 made by Elegoo and sent to me by AMS. Spoiler alert, much better than I thought it was going to be. This is the Elegoo Neptune 4 Pro. What a machine it is. I've just got this machine. I'm just unboxed it, put it together, tried a couple of prints, and I've got to show you guys. This is not an official review. This is just an initial look at what the print is about. This machine was sent to me by AMS up in Joburg, and I am I was quite surprised by receiving it. It just arrived on my doorstep. A little bit more about AMS shortly. This machine here, when I first got it, it was like, okay, cool. It's another printer. It's another one that looks like this. It's 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 okay let's let's unpack it and see what it's like i did not have high expectations i unboxed this machine put it together it didn't take long it wasn't overly complex to put together that's why i think it's not worth really showing putting together but i kind of wanted to see what this printer could do so i turned it on did a bit of reading about it and i started to get a little bit excited because i saw about the 500 millisecond speed and i thought what is this all about I also read up about the 18 second Benchy. Now, what is that all about? So I thought I had to give it a try. So I loaded the Benchy file on, I put it onto the machine and I printed. Uh, I did not print the correct file the first time. I printed a 40 minute Benchy. So I used the standard settings of the Cura and Elegu. And I then printed out and it took about 40 minutes, which is not bad because usually a Benchy takes 2 hours and 30, 2 hours and 20 minutes, depending on your slicer settings. But this took 40 minutes at the default settings, which did impress me. I had a look at the Benchy and man alive, it was actually really good. I was starting to get impressed by this machine. So then I have read about a little bit further on that there is an 18 minute Benchy. It is on the SD card. I had a problem loading it from the current SD card, so well the, the flash drive. So I downloaded the 18 minute version and I printed this thing. Printed in 17 minutes 58 seconds, which absolutely blew me away. It, it printed so fast, printed so well, and this is the result. As you can see on the top here, we have got a little bit of breakaway on the on the uh, the deck of the of the print. The deck is not perfect, but other than that, 18 minutes, that impressed me. So I wanted to do a couple of more prints on it. So I threw this on here, which is a toothbrush holder for our Braun toothbrushes. My wife asked me to print some new ones because the old ones got a bit dirty and old. So I decided to print a new one, printed this out in SPS. This took 48 minutes. Usually this took me two and a half, two, and a, two hours, 45 minutes to print. And I was impressed. This came out clean. It came out well. There's very few blemishes on it. It's perfect for my bathroom. So now I'm getting excited, okay, because this machine just looked like your standard run of the mill machine with some nicer features on it, nicer look and build. And But when I started printing with this machine, damn, was I impressed. This thing blew my socks off. You know, I got my Prusa Mark III and that became my favorite machine. I only got that recently and uh, it was a great machine. It really, that machine made me really excited about 3D printing again because the prints were consistently good. This machine now might have dethroned my Mark III as my favorite printer. I know that's really bad to say, but this might have dethroned it. I really am impressed with this machine. It's got its faults, no doubt about that. But other than that, it is a solidly built, well-built machine. Uh, it's got these, these rails over here at the top that are just like a bar which your rollers run on. And it seems to keep it very, very stable. The automatic bed leveling is exquisite. It works well. It's a 25 point. You save it in your clipper. Another thing, it's got clipper on it. That's why it's so fast. That's why it can print so fast. And Clipper is, I haven't had much of a foray into Clipper, but wow, it's pretty damn good. I'm sure most of you know this out there already, but yeah, this machine keeps on impressing me. I did have a failure. Well, failures are, are common. You do get them. I printed out this clip for a microphone and this part just came off. It just broke right off immediately. So I'll reprint this and figure out what I did wrong in the settings, maybe slow it down just a little. But these other prints have been good. I also printed off this funnel. 
I printed this off at max speed with using PLA, the fan going, <laughs> there's, there's the big negative, uh, the fan, my goodness is this fan loud, let's see if we can turn the fan control on, there it is, that's right, it blows like crazy, it's got this, I, let me turn it off because otherwise, otherwise I won't be able to talk, as you can hear it's loud, with that running in the background, yeah, it does sort of, you know, all my other printers, I run in my office in the background here at the back with my office in the front there. I can watch YouTube, I can work, I can do things. This machine's a tad bit on the loud side when you're going full speed and this fan is running full speed. Anyway, I printed off this cone. This is for uh, my, uh, what is it called? The Eureka Mignon Specialita uh, coffee grinder. Those ones that sass me are about my coffee. I'm getting better. I've got the new machine, the new grinder, so I'm quite excited about that. This here warped a little bit on the base, but other than that, for a, it was about one hour, 10 minutes. For a one hour, 10 minute print, this is not bad. This is solid. It's perfect for what I needed for. And as opposed to taking four, four and a half hours, maybe even five hours to print this out, it took me one hour and 20 minutes, which is great. If you're in a pinch and you need to get something printed, you can put this machine at its full speed and really pump out these prints. I don't think this was quite full speed. Um, I think it would peak at about 300 millimeters per second. This can go up to 500, but I will play around with those settings. Again, as I said, I've just got this machine. I've just unboxed, I've started printing with it, and I am super excited about it. It's a good machine. Another thing I do love is this. This just pops off. So this lives at the top there. As you can see, I've got a space up top there. And it's a little bit hard to reach. I can take my the panel down here and do whatever controls I want to do on it. This little display is really great. Touch screen. It's got the clipper uh, UI. Really good. Love it. Again, also love that this machine on the side here is an Ethernet port. You plug it in and then you've got access to this machine to the clipper UI, which... Yeah, it's quite nice actually because I don't, all my other machines have Octoprint on them. I love Octoprint. I think Octoprint is a great solution. But this native on the machine without adding any extra, just plug it in. I do wish it had Wi-Fi. Yeah, another small negative. It would be nice to have this on the Wi-Fi rather than trying to run network cables. But it works well. Let me show you the clipper interface. Over here, we've got a clipper. We've got our files. You simply drag and drop. You can control your printer from your computer remotely if you want to and you can then load files start the print and monitoring on the front here you've got a sd card which is very awkwardly located but it's there there's an sd card there's a usb type c uh, slot which is great they give you the usb type c so connecting directly to your laptop is awesome for programming you've got a usb port which is a usb a and then you've got your connector to your Connecting up a webcam is easy. You simply plug it into the USB port and it will require a restart. But there we go. There's your camera. If you can see it on my Fluid, on my Moonraker Clipper interface, you can see the camera is working perfectly. Works absolutely great. No issues with that. And uh, yeah, that I think is a great feature that I don't have to add anything extra to get a webcam working. You simply plug it in and there your webcam's working. The next thing is you can monitor all your temperatures directly from here. It is nice. I really like the fact that I can plug it into my network and I've got it network enabled. I don't like loading files onto a USB stick and then coming, you stick it in the machine, go to your control here and start it. I prefer just doing it directly from my computer, making sure everything is correct and away we go. So it starts off um, slow-ish on the first layer and then it kicks into full speed. Talking about the speed, it's got a dual gear driver extruder up front here with a decent hot end that works well. It pumps out uh, filament at a really, really fast rate. That print is quite amazing watching it go off at full speed that it can actually maintain those prints and maintain your putting down of filament at those speeds, which is mind boggling. It is amazing. This has taken a quantum leap forward in 3D printers. You still need to manually bed level and then it does a 25 point uh, bed leveling to get your, your grid, which you can see. If you look over here, this is my 25 point bed leveling. You can see that I'm slightly down on the one side, so I can adjust that a little bit better and get my tolerances even tighter. But so far, even printing with that, it's able to compensate and printing really, really well. The nozzle can go up to 300 degrees Celsius, so you can print some of the more complicated materials. Gone are the days of your 250 
260 degrees max hot end. This is going up to 300. So it can print out some exotic materials and because of that also it helps with the speed. The heat bed is quite interesting as well. It's got an intelligent segmented heat bed. Okay, and that's one of the differences between the Pro and the standard Neptune 4. The Neptune 4 Pro has a segmented heat bed which allows for two heat pads. So it's got a heat pad in the middle and then a heat pad on the outside. So if you're only printing in the middle, it will only heat up that section, reducing your power consumption and saving you on electricity and power on this machine. It's got a great little sensor over here that will sense your for the automatic bed leveling. Works well, I like it. It is very similar to the Prusa. It has got that kind of pinder kind of uh, inductive testing. I'm not exactly sure what type it is, but it works well and it does measure the bed extremely well. It's got a light underneath here, so you've got your light. Let's turn that on and show it. So if I go to light control, I can turn my I can turn my observation light on, which is the light underneath the printer here. You can see that quite nicely that it will highlight the printer. And then you can turn the main light at the top on as well. The main light at the top here is, is great for general highlighting the board. I'll, I'll leave it in the back there. I turn all the lights off. I do what I want to do. And I can monitor the printer using my webcam using... I prefer to use the, the main top one than the one on the printer. This one sort of overexposes it a bit, but get a great light of your print. So another great little add on these little things are absolutely awesome. This has got a part cooling fan in the head. So if you want to print slower without this monstrosity printing, uh, making all that noise, you can turn on, you can turn this off, but it's a manual switch. There's a little switch at the top here that you turn off in order to uh, to switch off the fan so that it doesn't start up. But the other fan, the, the side here will start up, which is your part cooling fan for your slower print. So if you want to go slower, more quiet, you can turn this off if you're rushed. You're not rushed for that print. Yeah, that's what I find with this thing. Where if you really are rushed for a print and you need something quick, especially to prototype, you can throw it on here and you'll have, under an hour, you'll have your printout and you're ready to prototype. Then if you want to, you can slow the print down and do a better print. Great functions, great features. So the main differences between the Pro and the Standard, it's about $50 difference in price. This is $299 on the Elegoo site, which is a very, very well-priced uh, printer for this for this segment of printing. It's very well-priced. $299 is a real beater. But it's got the segmented heat pads, and then also your rails here are slightly different on the Standard version. Other than that, there are no differences. The standard has the network, has your clipper, has the speed, so it has everything that this has except for the segmented and the better rollers. I think also this is an ex uh, these are CNC rails as opposed to the other one, which are your standard rails. Your, your, this looks nice, feels nice. One thing I really like is that on the top here, where you've got where you've got bits and pieces that can fall off, there's no little rails where things can get stuck in. You know, a printer gets so dirty so quickly in those rails with little pieces of, of filament falling in there, uh, blobs falling in there, and all these little things that fall in there, dust settles in there. Your printer gets quite filthy quite quickly, and it's always difficult to get that out. You need something like a vacuum cleaner. It's got a nice smooth top surface, so nothing's going to fall inside there and get in your ways. Uh, other than that, I can't say much more about this machine. It is a great machine. I really, as I said, when I first got this machine, I was, yeah, okay, cool. Another printer. Thank you so much. That's awesome. But now that I've used this printer, I'm blown away. AMS sent me this machine for me to review it. They are, they haven't asked me to, to affiliate them or to, I've got no affiliation. They didn't pay me for this review. This review is purely on my own. Uh, they decided to send it to me to, to just boost this printer because this printer is brand new on the market. So AMS sent it down to me and uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you Bernard for your for your support of the, of the channel and for getting these things out. As you can see, they have a wide range of 3D printers. They have, uh, they, and they've just partnered up with Elegoo. They are now official partners with Elegoo. If you go look on the Elegoo site, you can see that AMS is in there, they're in the South African region. And uh, there are, they do this at a really reasonable price. The printers are well priced. Their machines. Go check out their website. The link is in the description below. I want to take the second here to talk about what they are busy doing. They have created a new division called Apex Invent, and they were going to be launching a new machine there very shortly called the Artvark, or the 
aardvark, as people like to say. But this machine is going to be an exciting machine. So look out for that. That machine is going to come here for review soon. I'm really excited about that machine and support them. There are pre-orders for those machines and pre-orders for the Elegoo as well. Guys, that's about it for me for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit me a subscribe there. Hit me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. And have you got any questions about this machine? Throw them down in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer. I'll be coming with more features on this printer and more reviews and more information about this, this printer. And as I say, this was a first look at getting it. Super excited about it. Really, really great machine. Thank you for watching. God bless. Stay well, stay safe, and see you soon.